Across the globe, there are places which aspire to provide the most exclusive of holiday experiences. Luxurious. What I am doing is the best you can get in the moment. Adventurous. Oh my God, lions, oh my goodness. And sometimes quirky. He is one of the most famous guests and he has a fan club. He has an Instagram of over 10,000 followers. But what challenges do these hotels face and how do they strive to be a top destination? Anybody could have bricks and mortar in the right location, but in order to stay relevant, I do think it's important to innovate. With exclusive access, we go behind the scenes. All right, now let me take you to one of our specialty suites. Following the staff who work around the clock. Guys, we need to be fast, yeah? The guest is waiting. To deliver to their guests whatever it takes to impress. When you go from one room to the other, you go into another piece of art. Notice the view is like no other in the world. All our guests love fantasy and happiness. We take care of every guest and make them feel like kings. From Asia to Arizona, Kenya to the Caribbean, Dubai to India. Step behind the scenes of some of the world's most incredible hotels. Southeast Asia, an eclectic mix of ancient lands and cultures waiting to be explored. Vibrant and beautiful, some areas have the atmosphere of days gone by. In Thailand and the island nation of the Philippines are two hotels providing an insight into their stunning and captivating environment. One is situated at the very heart of nature, where animals roam freely, whilst the other provides a nostalgic journey back into its country's history. How do they provide an authentic experience for those wanting to immerse themselves in a Southeast Asian culture? Thailand, exotic, opulent, and majestic. Beyond the hustle and bustle of its capital, Bangkok, lies an enchanting land for those willing to explore off the beaten track. Its most northern province, Chiang Rai, offers lush jungle, peace and tranquility, as well as the infamous Golden Triangle, where three countries meet, Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar. Perched on a hilltop is the Anantara Golden Triangle and Elephant Camp Resort. Attracting guests who desire luxury, but with a taste for adventure. You get to wake up in the morning, the sun rise above the Laotian hills, grassland gets filled with condensation which rise from the grounds. So I would say they definitely provide a mystical experience uh, that enabled the guests to experience the legends of the Golden Triangle. Resort manager Goderick Harang Service. makes it a priority every morning to ensure the hotel's five-star standards are maintained. So checking the rooms is part of my daily jobs, which I do. Um, I try and check every VIP rooms, ensuring that every little detail is on par with uh, what they would be expecting checking in with us. These expansive suites, costing from around £1,500 per night, are decorated with traditional artwork and teak furnishings. With a very large tub to soak in, you can while away the day on your private balcony, enjoying the amazing view. Perfect. Capcom, Capcom, Pasadi. Being in the jungle, the facilities are always impacted by the nature and the environment that we have around. Howdy, Capcom, James. Sabadi, my cap. So we need to ensure we stay sharp, everything stays functioning, and it's not every day the easiest thing in the jungle, obviously. Guests here are treated to luxuries that are special to the resort. One of those is a cup of coffee with a very unusual origin. This is our Leo Black Ivory counter. Um, this coffee is unique in the world. It's made out of uh, coffee coming from elephant poop. So our elephants eat about uh, 40 kilos of coffee and out of it, we managed to get about one kilo of Black Ivory coffee. 
With a price tag of around £130 per 100 grams, Ivory Coffee is one of the most expensive in the world. But luxurious facilities and jungle surroundings are not the only reason visitors come to this resort. Anantara were looking to design guest experiences that were, were more about the elephant and were things that people hadn't seen before. We said, well, let's do something that can help guests know more about elephants. Given the hotel's close proximity to wildlife, it's not surprising it has its very own elephant camp. It's also home to the Golden Triangle Asian Elephant Foundation, which rescues these glorious animals. Once used for logging, which was subsequently banned, the elephants and their owners, known as mahouts, resorted to begging on the streets of Bangkok. That obviously is not very good way to make a living for a mahout and even worse for an elephant. They've been looking after elephants for generations and generations and generations. They now no longer had any work. So we thought to ourselves, let's see what we can do to help. Um, and that's how the foundation was born. Our rescued elephants are incorporated in the guest journey. Part of the money that they pay to stay here goes straight toward the foundation in order for us to um, ensure we keep on taking care of our elephants. The foundation tries to ensure the rescued elephants are well cared for while also being a popular attraction. Having elephants roaming freely in the grounds is something quite special for the hotel's guests. But these tremendous giants need food, attention and looking after. Good morning, everybody. Hedvet Nissa has arrived at the elephant camp. Walking with giant is morning and the afternoon. Also afternoon, yes. It's the morning briefing for the day ahead. Nissa's job is to ensure its herd of rescued elephants are fit and healthy. It will start in the grassland. Is that OK, Nissa? Yeah. With 25 elephants on the resort, visitors are spoilt for choice when it comes to activities with these gentle giants. Pretty busy. We do have walking with giants both the morning and the afternoon. So we'll be a bit busy today. Might not have time to think much. <laughs> so we're updating the whiteboard so the, all the mahouts actually know where they have to go at what time, so which activity they will have to go as well. The mahouts live in a village on the camp. Being the guardians of the elephants, they tend to their daily needs. So we ask him to come and look at the board so that he, since I don't see anybody around, so you might have to relay the message to the others. Oh, we're done for the morning section, really. Guest time. Let's go, let's go. With the resort bordering the winding Ruak River, many guests start their adventure by arriving the traditional way, on a long-tail boat. Taking in the outstanding natural beauty of the surrounding area, it can be a thrilling way to start a holiday. And being greeted by a welcoming committee of elephants from the resort's camp gives a flavour of what's to come. Back at the hotel, oh. food and beverage manager Mark is updating his busy team on the events of the day. So today, we have got 21 rooms arriving and four rooms departure. The hotel's two restaurants offer their own take on Thai and Italian cuisine, where guests can try a wide-ranging menu, even if they have specific dietary requirements. As you can see over here, several of them are either vegan, allergic to shellfish, dairy product, and some of them only eat healthy foods. Mark also ensures the smooth running of exclusive events to keep guests satisfied. So just going over the rundown of today, we'll be having two Dine by Designs. We'll be having Tida Camp for four people. This afternoon also, we'll be having our management cocktail. Today we're expecting around 40 to 50 people. Every day we've got several private dinner events located around in the jungle. We do not have storerooms in the jungle. Everything that's needed for setup comes from the resort. Going in the jungle and setting up a luxurious five-star experience is not that easy, but it happens every day. Something Mark and his team are well experienced in delivering. So it'll be a busy weekend, but all staff are on deck from service and kitchen. If you need anything, let myself or Chef Gino know. 
A bit of a celebrity chef in these parts, Pissit, known as Gino, has been at the hotel for a year. Welcome to Anantala, Golden Thai Angle. He's about to immerse two guests in authentic Thai cuisine. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, please, yeah, follow me. With the resort's Spice Spoons cooking experience, guided by executive chef Gino, they're starting their culinary journey with a trip to find locally sourced ingredients. Just over six miles away is Chiang Rai's vibrant market, which has all the rich herbs and spices needed for tasty Thai dishes. So this is the Siang San market. So you can see a lot of vegetable fruit is arrived. So the menu today, what we are planning to do for you, after we get back to the resort, we will do khao soi kai, and then we do our pad ka pao. Yeah. So what we do is get something to take from here, and then we get back to the resort and we start cooking. Yeah. So we start from the beginning. <coughs> yes, exactly. With Gino's inside knowledge of where to go and what to buy, they discover what gives Thai food its distinctive taste and flavor. So we will get something from here. So we will get the chili and we get some uh, mint and then some expand, some cilento. Yeah. That's going to be part of your menu today. And being near the river, there's no shortage of fresh fish. This is a local catfish in Thailand, but people love to have this fish for all the time. This is the tilapia. We're going to take one of these good to cook for tonight for you. Yeah, fresh. look at that. They're still fresh, they're still alive. That yeah. very, very As you can see, they're still alive, they're still moving. To the east of Thailand, over a six hour flight away, is the Philippines. A hidden gem of over 7,000 islands, its striking scenery and rich cultural heritage makes it the perfect place to explore. Two hours south of its capital, Manila, lies Villa Escadero Plantation and Resort. A working coconut plantation, it's been owned by the Escadero family for six generations. With its coconut tree-lined entrance, this picturesque and tranquil villa is brimming with character and the traditions of years gone by. Our Philippine style of life, it's everything is culture and history embedded in the way we always celebrate what happened. The resort aims to offer an authentic Filipino experience. And it's that that attracts many Filipinos who've emigrated and are now returning on holiday. The tourists now, they're so happy to hear the old songs they knew were sang by our ancestors, and they sing along. Bought from a tribal chieftain in 1842, this large plantation opened to the public as a hotel resort 38 years ago. Riverside cottages with big, comfortable rooms and high ceilings are full of Philippine charm with executive suites having a private veranda and their very own hammock. A long-standing member of staff is guest services manager and choreographer Ernesto. Take it from Dano, Jung Sbagoyan. This morning, he's in the middle of rehearsals for the afternoon's cultural extravaganza, the Philippine Experience Show. Folk dancing is merely uh, telling the story of the people, the story of Filipinos working, praying, courtship. Also, it depends on which place it comes from. So it varies from every province or places. With the Philippines once being part of the Spanish East Indies, there are influences throughout the show. Uh, this is a Venduria. Uh, the Octavina is bigger. Uh, guitar sh a smaller guitar shape. This is the guitar, and that's the Bajo de Unias, or the Filipino bass guitar. Ernesto likes to put his dancers through their paces. But not long into this morning's rehearsal, things aren't going well. Ulet, again, 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 before that. And Ernesto doesn't hold back in telling them so. Oh, tapusin mo, again. Again, tapusin mo hanggang doon. Umalis kayo dyan. 
they're doing it a shortcut way. That's why I'm not satisfied. Next! Forever the perfectionist, Ernesto strives for things to be just right. Okay, ready? Go in single. Go and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and. Okay, next. Still not happy, Ernesto takes things into his own hands, showing them how it's done. Okay, let's go. They cannot believe I'm going to dance. But I haven't danced for years. It may be a few years, but he clearly hasn't hung up his dancing shoes. I don't have any patience. Medicine for this. Go next, Kuntao. While Ernesto catches his breath, sous chef Antonio is heading to the kitchen. Between guests in residence plus additional visitors to the waterfall restaurant, he has his work cut out. With such a large group for lunch, preparation, planning and coordination are key. Ang mga niluluto namin pagkain dito, siyempre pangkaraniwan, uh, traditional, dahil yun ang aming kinagis na. So, nagugustuhan ng mga guests, nasasarapan sila. Antonio's first job of the day is to focus on roasting the chickens. Ilang piraso ito, bale? Stuffed with tamarind leaves, these tender herbs will add a hint of spice, giving a wonderful exotic flavor. Good. Pagkatapos po natin ma, uh, ituhog dito sa kawayan, idiretso na po natin ihaw sa charcoal o uling. Kasi meron na po tayong pa, uh, paapoy na charcoal o uling. Kaya idiretso na po natin ang ihaw. Bali, ito naman po'y dalawang oras ng loto na. The dining experience at the villa is something out of the ordinary. They have a busy outdoor restaurant that aims to connect guests with their surroundings. With lunchtime looming, there's no time to waste as Antonio's team prepares a banquet of traditional Philippine recipes with a variety of fish and meats. It might be a hive of activity in Chef Antonio's kitchen, but outside, Water Health and Safety Officer Venerando is working at a more leisurely pace in the peace and tranquility of the Labasin River. Panahon ngayon, kaya alam namin na madaming darating na mga guests para pumasok dito sa Bilya Escudero. Hello po, ma'am. Hello, sir. Sasakay po. Interrupting. Before lunch, with the villa being so close to water, guests can enjoy a few hours on the river in a traditional bamboo raft. Mapaalala po, ha? Rafting is a great way to relax and while away the hours. The river has an abundance of fish from tilapia to catfish and carp, but some visitors have been lucky enough to spot the odd turtle. In Thailand, for many visitors to Chiang Rai, one of the main attractions is the elephants. Vet Nissa has picked up two guests from the Anantara Resort who want to get familiar with these beautiful animals on the Walking with Giants tour. Alrighty guys, so we're here. Under a mile from the hotel are the grasslands, an area covering just over 210,000 square meters. Right. So be careful your step, they're kind of elephant size, so you might need to hold on to the rail, okay? Here, there's an abundance of wildlife and, of course, elephants meandering through the jungle. You guys see any elephant yet? <laughs> oh, there's one up there, I see. Hello. Come on, buddy. Can I have Oh, yeah, yeah, I have some food. Yeah, I have some food. Here, this is something for you to give to the elephant. To the trunk, it's OK. <laughs> yeah, you can put it right there, so it's just like this, it's OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yummy, right? 
Oh, you like it. <laughs> yeah. So this is Menoy, 19 years old. Today the guests are walking with Menoy and Bo. Hi, Bo. So Bo is about 40 years old. She's one of our largest elephants that we have on site as well, so kind of big. These animals have a hefty appetite. Daily, they're fed about 10% of their body weight. Menoy, don't go too far, buddy. With 25 elephants on site, that's a whopping three tons of food a day. If you see an elephant that doesn't eat, that's when you know that there's trouble. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. oh, oh my God. Yeah, she looks so happy with that. In this lush green area, the rescued elephants roam freely. Of course, under the watchful eye of their mahout. This morning, the guests are spending 90 minutes in the company of these magnificent beasts, strolling with them side by side in their natural environment and at their own pace. Hello, Benoit. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. You can touch the skin. It's OK. Hi, nobody. It's a memorable experience and an opportunity for guests to find out more. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Yep. <laughs> so this is what we call sand bathing or mud bathing an elephant if it's mud usually. They threw a lot of sand and mud onto the back, onto the belly so that they can actually protect their body from the sun. And when they flap the ears, oh. so they feel cool. Ah, oh, I see. Let's go. Elephants love water, and with them leading the way, the fun begins. Shower time, let's go, buddy. Bo, you can't jump from there either. It's very tall, buddy. Or you are. <laughs> Realising it's too high, Bo has a change of tack. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uses the path. Go, go, buddy. Manoy and Bo love nothing better than playing in the water. <laughs> All right, someone is very excited to be in the water over there. And know how to ensure no one can spoil their fun. Say no, the Mahood is not going to swim to get them, unless they're really forced to. But they're so intelligent. They are. This really is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for guests. Away from the elephants and back at the hotel, in the kitchen, guests Jar and Nick are joining executive chef Gino for their lesson in authentic Thai cooking. So this is the ingredient what we uh, bought from market this morning. With these ingredients, they'll make a two-course meal. So basically, the first one, we're going to do the fit soup. We call it tom yam pa. Tom, whatever in Thailand, is mean boiling. Pa is mean fit, yeah. This typical Thai dish is called Tom Sang Pla Top Ting and is infused with flavour. And for a connoisseur such as Gino with 26 years' experience, it doesn't take him long to put it together. You will smell some nice herb and you feel hungry on that. Yeah, yeah it feels very, very nice. <laughs> Let's take a test, yeah? Thank you that very much. That very, very good. OK, now your turn. Now Chef Gino has finished his demonstration, the tables are turned as Jar and Nick roll up their sleeves and turn chef themselves. First, you have to cut the vegetable. So who the one is not cooking at the home? So Jar, you would cook. <laughs> so he not cook anything for you, yeah, right? Never. So make sure the stock is boiling and then get the herb, I mean, lemon grab. In Thailand, this dish is served as a first course. Yeah. Get the fish in there. Looks nice. So you can add, you know, prawn, you can add the scallop. So using the fish sauce, have to be careful because it's quite turning to salty easily. Tom Sang Pla Top Ting is a relatively quick dish to make and ideal for guests to apply their culinary skills. That's lovely. Yep. Very nice. I can smell some very, you know, yeah. herbs or in the soup. Yeah. That's just. <laughs> Pretty much is done. It's perfect. Nikki, how are you going? Yeah? You put any lamb juice already in? Yeah? Now it's time for Gino's taste test. Lovely, nice smells and the colourful. Look very, very nice. Amazing. It's very nice. I could believe that I just made yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow. wow. Let's try it from the next one. 
So what do you feel next? Am I gonna die? Yeah. Like he did? <laughs> uh, wow, that sour taste a little bit, a little bit spicy. That is absolutely the tom yam pra. That's the spirit. That's very nice. Yeah. Next dish has gone down a treat, but will it be top marks for his wife Jar? Good job, yeah, good job. <laughs> After all that fine wine and food, some guests like to help keep their fitness regime up with Mai Tai Boxing, an activity at the hotel wow. on offer for guests. Did you change uniform? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so nice. Taking today's lesson is the resort's Mai Tai Boxing instructor, Akarapol. Nice. OK, and are you ready? Yes. OK, they come the first, they come stand. Over a thousand years old, Thai boxing is the national sport of Thailand. Hi. Up. This rigorous sport uses a combination of fists, elbows, knees and feet to hit your opponent. OK, up. Okay, one more, huh? one more. Up. And up. OK, nice. Yeah. Good job. And next, got and next, knee. Us. For this demanding workout, stamina is needed. Ensuring an intense workout. Yes, beautiful. Come on, ten times. One, up, two, up. Instructor Akarapol likes to push his clients to the limit. Yes. Ah. Keeping the pressure on in the Thai one, boxing two. ring. One, two, me. Kick, come on, up. Kick. Okay, nice. How you feel? Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> so tired, yes, but it's okay. Not good. It's okay. Yeah, I'm so no. fun. Thai kickboxing certainly isn't for everyone. For those guests who aren't exploring outside the hotel and just want a break in the sun, there's also a more traditional infinity pool. And for anyone who's spent a hard day out and about, there's a chance to experience another Thai tradition, a rigorous massage. At the elephant camp, guests can visit the Mahout village to get a glimpse of their daily life. After a day of trekking through the jungle and playing in the river, Manoy and Bo are in need of a wash. But the Mahouts have noticed something wrong with Bo. The elephant just have a little nick on the ear, so she's bleeding, so I'm going to go and clean it. Oops. It may only be a minor cut for such a big animal. So that is going to prevent her from going into like an open infection, basically. But Vet Nissa likes to ensure all of the elephants are in good health. Okay, buddy. It's a little bit stinking. When we were actually doing the walking with giants, she went into the water and she basically rolled off to her side. And there was a lot of bamboo that is actually growing on the side, so some part of the dry one actually stabbed her on the ears. It didn't go through, so it's actually very minor, so... Put on the antiseptic cream and that should be pretty much okay for the elephant, and yeah, nothing serious. There are so many things to love about this job, really, but definitely it's the elephant themselves. Definitely, because each of the elephant that I see every single day, they're, I mean, they're the same elephant, but your interaction with them is always a little bit different. With Bo now back in top shape, she's ready for another day of getting to know Anantara's guests. In the Philippines, at the Villa Escadero Plantation and Resort, there's an unusual way to explore the grounds. The national animal of the Philippines, the carabao, is a water buffalo. And used with a cart, it transports guests. There are 30 of these sturdy animals at the villa. Being driven by a buffalo and serenaded by musicians playing traditional Filipino songs, 
is a unique way to see the sights. Guests intrigued by the history of the Philippines don't have to go far, as the resort houses its very own museum, with one of the Philippines' largest private collections of antiques. At exactly uh, past two o'clock, they need time to clean the museum. Museum guide Andre is frantically trying to clean the museum before guests arrive for this afternoon's tour. A little bit of uh, dust. Through the years, the Escudero family's ancestors have collected a variety of both local and worldwide artefacts on their travels. Since childhood, I've been surrounded by antiques. As far as appreciating antiquity, it was like embedded in me. I got so used to the collections of my parents, I decided to house the collections. The museum's distinctive pink building is a replica of a church in Manila, destroyed during the Second World War. When you go here, wow, this is the villa. Oh, this is the collections. They are very impressive, well, especially when they see the collections. Outside, inquisitive visitors have started to arrive. You see him, what? Andre has had several roles across the villa for 27 years. As a museum guide, he spent many of those mastering the history of the Escudero family's antiques. The guests have so many questions about the history of what? Of course, the family. Not only the collections inside, that's why you know everything about the family story from when the family started to the present right now. When it comes to each of the artifacts, Andre is very informative. So here, uh, we have the carriages. And then on your right again behind you, you will see we have a different patrons. The museum provides a glimpse into the Philippines' rich Spanish and Catholic heritage, featuring religious statues and stunning altars. The silver-plated altar from the Catholic Church in Manila, and then we have uh, the 12 disciple display life-size. That it was donated by the uh, bus BLTB owner is the Potenciano family in San Pablo. And then we have the third full stations of the cross. So this is the relics of old Catholic exhibit for. An eclectic mix of the family's private collection, it also includes rare items and relics that date back to the Philippines' pre-colonial era. So here, uh, we have uh, blowfish, crustacean crab, turtle, shells, coconut crab. Look at the crab. Which is the crab? can climb and crack a coconut. I really love my job. That's why I'm working in 27 years. That's why I'm enjoying my life in the villa. Choreographer Ernesto has just arrived back at the Coconut Pavilion for a full dress rehearsal of this afternoon's cultural performance, the Philippine Experience Show. OK, dancers, ready? Go. Not just a run through for the dancers, Ernesto has to rehearse his delivery to the audience. This dance is part of a great feast, notably peace pact or bodong. Women balance baskets filled with festive goods on their heads, and blankets of life are later displayed. With up to 20 dances to rehearse, they have their work cut out. But have our dancers progressed since this morning? Ano nga natin sa yaya? Tingnan nga natin yung yaya ninyo. Dapat forward ka pa. Go. Yaya. After the start. Uh, after four. Alamin ninyo, ha? Ikaw, kasabay na naman kayong dalawa. Ready? After tan, 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 tan. Yaya. Go. And. Go. I am branded as a screaming person when it's concert. You will not believe it when I scream. Down your blankets! My challenges are those my trainees that's stubborn, uh, hard-headed. You taught them during uh, training, you taught them during the proper training on stage, and then you taught them before the show starts. Ready, seven? Go! Yeah. With only a few hours to go, Jeffrey! 
the pressure is on to make sure it's perfect for this afternoon's main performance. In Thailand, at the Anantara Resort, Chef Gino is busy in the kitchen. Everyone love chili. Right, everyone ready? We got to pick up now, we got to go now. He's preparing for this afternoon's manager's cocktail and canopies event for guests, with colourful drinks and exotic flavours, all delicately prepared by Gino. So this is another dish we call prawn cocktail. That's going to be one of the highlight menu for tonight's cocktail. This is a grilled prawn with uh, spiced chilli, some uh, seasoned pepper. For Gino, presentation is everything. Okay, guy, I'm ready now. Let's go. Once a week, this social event is held on the lawn for visitors and staff to gather in a relaxed atmosphere with the senior hotel team. So you'll get most of our managers will be there taking care of the guests, sharing stories with them, telling them what we do at the hotel, stories of our elephants. We've got some special cocktails, wine, beers. This is the time you can relax with management, sit down, talk about anything you want. Just a few more finishing touches. Wonderful. So everything here. So ready for the cocktail tonight. The guest is on the way coming. And bong and fenty. With the resort covering over 160 acres, one of its modes of transport, a jeep, dates back to the Second World War. This evening, two guests are indulging in one of the hotel's luxurious experiences, dining by design. Uh, being prepared a private dinner with your very own personal chef in a beautiful setting in the resort's grounds. So from this platform, you get to see the elephants right here. Um, working together um, all throughout the dinner, um, coming and asking for food just here uh, because they just really love their food. Resort manager Godric is ensuring that everything's ready to make it a memorable experience. We are located in the jungle, which means that you have to get an experience which is going to be a little more rustic than if you were dining in a Michelin star restaurant in a city. However, it's important that we still preserve a fantastic, luxurious standard, right? All the more impressive uh, if you manage to uh, really pull that off uh, all throughout being in the middle of the jungle right here. For Godric, there are perks to the job. Obviously, one of the little pleasures of my day is uh, wherever I walk around, I always get to see uh, an elephant. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. I don't think that many people can say that about their job. Happy that everything is set up for later, he can head back to the hotel. And he'll be just in time for the resort manager's cocktails and canapes. The fire is lit and the musicians are playing. Gino's canapes are going down a treat. It's an occasion all the staff look forward to. On the other side of the resort, at the elephant camp. Two guests have arrived for the dining by design experience. So your menu today is uh, varieties of the fish and the meats. The main court we have the local fit telek here, served with the rice noodle, and then with some spicy salt. That's going to be main court for tonight. Hope you enjoy it you know, tonight, yeah, looking forward. Yeah, but not so spicy. Of course, absolutely, we already do some spices on that, yeah. Dinner here is mostly very traditional food, but is also an opportunity for a one-to-one -one with the camp's elephants. Guests who pick this experience can choose from a variety of menus or exclusively design their own. This evening, Gino's prepared a selection of Northern Thai cuisine. There are several courses for the guests to sample, and Gino's aromatic dishes also attract the attention of the resort's other residents between courses.
In the Philippines, at the Villa Escadero, guests are taking in the view at the Waterfall Restaurant. Dinner is a banquet of traditional Philippine food with grilled fish, pork, roast chicken and stir-fried noodles right next to the waterfall. There are fresh fruits for dessert picked on the villa's grounds. So has Chef Antonio's hard work preparing dishes in the kitchen paid off? Madami kaming guests ngayon. I'll make sure na uh, sinusupervise ko sila yung, yung aming pagkain para hindi kami kulangin o kung may dadating pa na guests ay masuportahan namin ang pagkain namin. Tsaka mga staff ko naman okay naman sa pagtatrabaho nila tsaka uh, napakasisipag nila. The Waterfall Restaurant is the centerpiece of the villa. Visitors wade in the shallow water whilst eating, leaving their shoes at the side. The combination of the waterfall and the Philippine cuisine makes it a really memorable experience. At the Coconut Pavilion, Ernesto and his performer's moment has arrived. As crowds have turned up for this afternoon's Philippine experience show. From its far off origin, Andalusia, Spain, Paseo de Andalus. With so many dances, Ernesto has his hands full making sure all runs smoothly. Backstage, it's a hive of activity. And with several hundred people in the audience, the pressure's on. It brings the Filipino in me because they keep the, the tradition. But if Mayans are Filipinos who stayed uh, abroad or migrated there and come back to visit us, they all love it. Sometimes most of them cry when they hear the songs, when they hear the, when they saw the dances. Because, you know, it's kind of nostalgic and dramatic to them, and so, so m most of the time they cry. The musical extravaganza is coming to a close. <laughs> Whilst it was enjoyed by an appreciative audience, not everyone's happy. Well, I'm satisfied. There are minimal mistakes, but it's tolerable until the last dance. I am now mad because of one person that did a mistake. She ruined the, the entire dance at all. So she'll get some beautiful words for me. <laughs> We're all done now for the day and we'll do it again tomorrow. Striking Southeast Asia and two incredible hotels. Thailand's extravagant Anantara Golden Triangle and Elephant Camp, with five-star luxury in the jungle, and an unmissable opportunity to walk side by side with one of the world's most incredible animals. I am not aware yet of other resorts where you get to experience anything as close as the experience that we propose to our guests with our elephants, uh, that being ethical, um, and so our guests participating into a journey of recovery for these elephants and of preservation. And in the Philippines, Villa Escadero Plantations and Resort, offering a real authentic taste of its rich, radiant history and culture. My favorite is that you go back in time, the old traditions and customs of our country, including food, including dances, including traditions. <laughs> Both play a part in preservation to protect their heritage and future. Providing an exotic adventure and amazing memories for their guests along the way. <laughs>